Hello, my name is Michael Griggs. I am the Director of Clinical Services for BREAS, and I am going to go over the main monitoring screen on the uh, Vivo 65. Um, so the main monitoring screen, as you can see here, this is basically all your main measured values coming from the patient. So let me uh, just kind of discuss what you're looking at on the main screen. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the mode of ventilation. Uh, it currently is uh, pressure support ventilation in the adult patient mode. Uh, daytime profile, uh, one of three pages of monitoring. That's what the one with the three in parentheses stands for. <coughs> Excuse me, and I have the current time. Uh, I've got a real-time graphic display of my pressure, as well as a real-time graphic display of my tidal volume. Uh, those values are displayed here here and here. So currently this is my uh, uh, peak pressure, this is my end expiratory pressure, and my tidal volume delivery to my test lung. Uh, taking a closer look, if you look, I've got some red lines here. Uh, this represents my low pressure setting, low pressure alarm setting, and my high pressure alarm setting. So I currently have those set at 30 and 10. And then I also have a low tidal volume alarm as well as a high tidal volume alarm setting. And that's what those red lines represent in my volume. Okay. Um, under here with my main monitoring um, window here, I've got uh, a, a value here that shows that uh, I've got a full charge on my internal battery. If I had my external battery attached, it would display the status of that external battery. This icon here shows that I have a passive circuit attached to the patient. If I had a different type of circuit, uh, a uh, single limb active circuit or a dual limb circuit or a mouthpiece ventilation circuit, um, that, <coughs> excuse me, that icon would change. I currently have my uh, FiO2 uh, connected to the device and uh, it would also display end tidal or SpO2 as well in this uh, extra section if I had that attached, in which case I will just to uh, demonstrate. Um, <clears throat> again, here's again the main values uh, measured uh, and uh, uh, coming from the patient. So in row one, obviously my peak pressure, my PEEP setting, I've got a mean airway pressure, but I also have a leak measurement. When you are using a passive circuit, you will see a uh, leak measurement here uh, for you to, uh, uh, to be aware of. Okay? This could be an intentional leak, it could be a non-intentional leak, but that value is going to display the uh, leakage measurement um, per breath. In row two, I have a minute ventilation, exhaled minute ventilation, in liters, I have an exhaled uh, tidal volume in milliliters. When you are using a passive circuit, these values will display expiratory, and this is a calculated expiratory measurement. If I am using a single limb active circuit, this would display an inspiratory minute ventilation as well as an inspiratory tidal volume. And if I'm using a dual limb circuit, this would be my inspiratory uh, tidal volume. And I would display my exhaled tidal volume here, as well as my exhaled um, minute ventilation. I do have the FiO2 connected, uh, our exhaled, uh, excuse me, our uh, 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 external O2 sensor. And my, <coughs> Excuse me, my FiO2 is being displayed right here. <clears throat> I'm going to skip over the uh, percent in target volume for just a moment, and I'll come back to that. Uh, total rate, my spontaneous rate, and my spontaneous percentage. My total rate is currently 10. I do not have a spontaneous rate currently. And this spontaneous percentage is a percentage of how often the ventilator is recognizing a spontaneous breath. So if I were to grab my test lung and start to breathe spontaneously on that test lung, then you'll notice that my percentage starts to increase as far as that uh, um, percentage of how often the patient is initiating a spontaneous effort. 
I do not currently have the SpO2 and pulse rate connected, so I'm going to reach over here and just push that in, and I'm going to stick my finger into the uh, oximity probe, and you'll notice that here shortly I will have an SpO2 and a pulse rate to be displayed on the screen. Okay. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to get an alarm here for just a moment. And there we go. And then in the last row, I have an IE a measured IE ratio. I have a measured inspiratory time in seconds. I have a measured rise time in seconds. And then my end tidal CO2 and my inspiratory CO2 is currently gray. So I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to push that in. And you'll notice that my... Uh, and uh, O2 sensor. I'm going to go ahead and blow through that. And you'll see that I, my end tidal CO2 values are displayed in the lower right hand corner of the screen. All right, so I'm going to come back to this percentage and target volume feature again, real quick. Um, but what I need to do is I need to place the ventilator into target volume. So I'm going to come over here to my setup. I'm going to turn my target volume feature on. And I'm going to just simply manipulate my maximum pressure settings so that I can start increasing my target volume. Okay, so now you'll notice that that's no longer gray. And as my tidal volume starts to increase towards my target, once the ventilator starts uh, hitting that 300 ml, that's going to start to increase my target volume, okay? So the Vivo has the ability to alert the user of how often the uh, patient is hitting uh, their target volume goal. <clears throat> so that's kind of a nice feature to be able to walk up to the machine if the patient is in a volume guarantee mode of ventilation and see how often the patient is hitting that, uh, that uh, volume goal. So as you'll see, as I start to get closer, whoops, then that value will start to increase. All right, so I'm gonna leave that uh, alone at the moment. But this is basically the uh, quick overview of the uh, front page of the Vivo 65. So you'll notice again, with a one with a three in parentheses, this means that I am in page one of three pages of monitoring. If I hit that monitor button again, this takes me to my um, alarm, or excuse me, my alarm, my uh, uh, waveform page. And you can see on a breath by breath basis that I can look at the uh, waveforms associated with each breath. Now, <coughs> you'll notice that the scales are a little bit higher here than they are right here. So if you do need to change the scale to make it easier to look at them, all you simply have to do is just, again, highlight a parameter by moving down or up, okay? Highlight the parameter that you wanna change and then you're gonna move left and right to increase or decrease the uh, waveform uh, scale. So now you can uh, uh, change the look of those scales so that it makes it easier to look at. Now the vent ventilator will not automatically do this. If you need to make changes to the scale, you will have to do that manually. But that is how you change the scale of uh, each breath. Also, you can also change the amount of time that uh, you are looking at here for moving across the screen. So this is 10 seconds worth of information. You can see how that changes the, uh, the view. <clears throat> All right. So I also want to point out the fact that over here, we also have a fourth waveform, okay? And that's our CO2 waveform. So I'm going to plug the uh, entitled CO2 back in, okay? And I'm going to blow through the uh, uh, O2 adapter or entitled CO2 adapter and you'll see that I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have real-time capnography waveforms to view. There we go, 
that's a better look at it. So great feature here to be able to uh, view on a breath by breath basis, the patient's end tidal CO2 capnography waveforms. So this is our page two of our monitoring. And to move over to page three, I just simply hit the monitor button one last time. And now what I'm looking at is a trend screen. So I can look at one hour, six hours, 24 up to 48 hours worth of trended data. Okay, so I'm just gonna highlight that six. I'm gonna move it over to one to kind of give you a better uh, look at the trended information. Um, so over here on the left-hand side, these are our uh, parameters that we're trending. I can look at my peak pressure and my PEEP, which is in yellow and blue, my total rate and my spontaneous rate uh, in red and in green, inspiratory tidal volumes, expiratory tidal volumes, or both can be viewed here in the, on the bottom. And then if you come back across on the other side, I've got a leakage measurement, uh, end tidal CO2 value, as well as an SpO2 value. So great information at the touch of a button. I can go back up to 48 hours and look at uh, different uh, trends um, on the screen um, for uh, your uh, reference. Okay, so this is page three of three. And if I hit the monitor button one last time, this takes me back to page one. And that is the monitoring menu. Uh, I do wanna take a uh, one last look at this percent in target volume and you'll see that uh, the more often I am hitting that target volume goal, you'll see that that percentage has gone up. Okay, so again, a great feature there. If you are using the target volume feature, um, the Vivo 65 is going to give you a percentage of how often that patient is hitting the, uh, the uh, target volume goal. And that is a quick overview of the main monitoring screen. Thank you very much for your time.